understanding God's Word. Pastor Murray's unique teaching approach brings God's Word alive with meaning as he takes you on a chapter-by-chapter, verse-by-verse study of God's letter to you, the Bible. And now here is Pastor Arnold Murray. Good day to you. God bless you. Say welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel. Welcome to this family Bible study hour. Back in our Father's Word, chapter 18, the great book of Revelation. Revelation means what? It means the unveiling. To make God's plan known. What a fantastic chapter the 17th was. Uh, God doing the interpreting. Letting us know that the harlot that was riding upon the waters was none other than Babel or confusion and what she was riding on was people's confusion in the minds of the people all over the world. Confused that he that was, is, and goes into perdition, that's to say Satan, the old dragon, the devil, Lucifer, Antichrist, the false prophet, all wrapped up in one package, one entity, revealed and God doing the interpreting to let us know exactly how it was going down. And the history of the um, city from Christ's time, that is to say first um, by Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, then by Medo-Persia, then by Greece, Alexander, then by Rome, of course, Caesar, and then the Mohammedans in the year of 636 uh, A.D. up until this present day. 1948, part of the city was taken over by both the good and the bad figs. What, what a history he gives us in that and then tells us exactly who is the eighth and so forth. It's that same one that goes into perdition. A little recap as we go into this 18th chapter, that's basically what it is, is talking about her downfall, that old city Babylon, which is none other than confusion on the people. Chapter 18 of verse 1, word of wisdom from our Father, verse 1 reads, And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power. That's authority. And the earth was lighted with his glory. I mean, it was, this is an angel from God himself. The truth was all around him. Verse 2, and he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, a cage of every unclean and hateful bird, which means spirits. <clears throat> and so she is. That's what confusion is. And always remember, when you're thinking things through, God is not I repeat, is not the author of confusion, Babel, but of peace. If it doesn't ring true to peace, then you don't have the truth. You need to understand it. Verse 3, for all nations, how, how many was that? All nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. This is not the ten kings. You've got to keep these separate in your mind. These are not the ten kings that Satan brings with him, but these are actual rulers here on earth that have um, committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Um, and this word abundance, in the, um, it, it means power. Because you know what the word is in the Greek? It's dunamis, from which we get our word dynamite. It's power, explosive. And, and so it is. Her delicacies are the power of one worldism that she brings upon people. Why is it the whole world? Because it's one worldism. All the world whores after the false Christ, thinking he is Messiah, thinking he is the leader of their great religions, all of them. He will fit that category. They will think their particular head of their particular religion, and I'm not going to start naming them. I don't have to. You know what they are. I'm not talking about Christians alone. I'm talking about every religion. He will claim to be all in all, and they will believe him as all in all. That's why the whole world whores after him. 
this, this in itself should remind you of how very deceitful Satan is. That every religion in the world that is not educated in God's word, the unveiling, the uncovering, is going to worship him. You want to make sure, as Christ would say in Mark chapter 13, for the elect's sake, I've shortened the time, else no flesh would be saved, meaning even some of the elect, if they're not careful, can be snowed by him. For he's good at snowing people. See that you don't get involved. Verse 4, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. Well, how do you come out of her? With truth. Confusion. You do not want to float around in confusion, not knowing from one day to the next what's happening in this world when God has sent you a letter telling you exactly by the number, all seven of them, seven seals, seven trumps, seven vials, and the perfect order in which they transpire. You've been warned. All you have to do is read it, absorb it, and come out of confusion by learning truth, by loving your Father, asking Him for wisdom, for all wisdom comes from Him. He's engineering everything. Well, in as much as he's engineering everything, you want to be familiar with his word because that's how it's going to happen. And when you're not familiar with how it happens, that's confusion, and confusion is Babylon. Come out of her. You don't belong there if you truly love the Lord, and, and so it is. Uh, verse 5, For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. And he's going to render pound for pound everything she's got coming to her. Okay. And the confusion has reached even to the Father's place, throne where he says, I'm not putting up with it any longer. This is when truly the end has come, when he puts her in her place. Verse 6, reward her even as she rewarded you. And double unto her, double according to her works. In the cup which she hath filled, fill to her double. Well, now, you know, a lot of people like to dally with numbers, and I suppose God gives us numbers. Why would he double the measure? Well, what is the measure of the false Christ that brings about the deception? That is to say, the king of Babylon here in the book of Revelation. It's 666. Six seal, six trump, and six vial. If you double 666, you get 1232, which is three days short of the 1335 in the book of Daniel You were that the blessed would wait to. Just three years short. So that, uh, what does that mean? Well, probably, maybe it doesn't mean anything. But at least it is worth watching, because you are a watchman, and you're supposed to watch. When we cover the book of Daniel, if you have not covered it yet with me, then you'll come to a better understanding of it. Uh, and when you fill her cup to her double, then she'll get everything she's got coming to her. That is to say, the confusion that is on the minds of the people. <clears throat> Verse 7, how much she has glorified herself and lived deliciously so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Now, this is, this is, I feel, one of the reasons that Christ would say, woe to those that are with child when I return. It's speaking in a spiritual sense, as you can read in Mark 13, Matthew 24. In other words, he's the husband, he's been away for 2,000 years. While that 2,000 years is gone, the true bride of Christ is a widow. He died on the cross. But not this old heifer. She said, I'm a queen. I'm happily married to who? The false Christ, of course. So therefore, you want to be very careful, my friend, 
You have two ladies mentioned in the book of Revelation specifically. You have in Revelation chapter 12, Mother Israel with the 12 stars on her head, that is to say, spiritually speaking, the zodiac, that mother of Israel. And then you have this harlot that whores after every false teaching, misleading people, and people swallow it hook, line, and sinker, and don't ever forget she uses all four hidden dynasties to get it done. Well, what, what are those four hidden dynasties? Well, they're written for you in Zechariah chapter 1, the four horns. That's one of them is <coughs> political. That's governmental. The second is financial. You know, Satan likes to play financial, get a bunch of people to invest in this, that, and the other, and then let her go belly up, and the people lose all their money, and they're in straight shapes, and they'll pass it off as hard times. It was planned, manipulated. And then, then you will have um, education, and you have professors today that people pay great tuition cost to send their kids to be brainwashed by an idiot. That absolutely, well, let's take one little college like Stanford likes to drive the ROTC off the, off the uh, campus, okay? Why? Well, we do, nothing military. Where would they be without military today? Maybe they would all be speaking Chinese or Japanese. Maybe many of them do already, nothing wrong with that. The, and then you have these fruitcakes that have degrees there, mostly BBs and BSs, if you want to know the truth about it. <clears throat> there are good professors, but they have been infiltrated with the left to the point that they stink. And you better warn your children about it if you send them to one of those. It's despicable. Talk about confusion. Talk about babble. All you got to do is listen to one of them for an hour. What's a kid going to do when they hear babble, babble, babble? And lies, lies, lies. Again, not all are that way, but a large percentage. And you pay big bucks. You're paying their salary when you do that. You want to be careful what college you send your kids to. It's important. Yeah, she sits a queen because she doesn't love the Lord, has no place for him, and will hook up with anything that comes along. Verse 8, therefore shall her plagues come in one day. That's the Lord's day. Death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. God is a consuming fire. And strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. I mean, she's going to be tested by fire, and if her works aren't of gold, they're going to melt. If her works are usually straw, what happens to straw when a consuming fire hits it? It's a flash. If it's silver, it'll hang pretty good, but if it's wood, it'll go. So uh, when people try to drive God away, they don't even have straw. Verse 9, and the kings of the earth, th this is not the supernatural king Satan brings with him again. It's your world leaders who have committed fornication and live deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. But we, we voted in, we all voted for it, and it's, nobody wanted it. But Satan drove us on backroom deals and smoke, I mean, smoke, blowing smoke, lying to people, even when the people didn't want. That's the way it goes, friend. That's what this is talking about. The fire is coming. It's going to get hot. And those that want to take part in Babel, get ready for... You better get you some asbestos drawers. I'll just tell, be truthful with you. And that's not a good sign right there, 10. 
standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. What is that hour? The hour of temptation. That's when God's Christian soldiers step forward and the Holy Spirit speaks through them as they're delivered up before this mess, the false Christ, and right is brought back to our nation and to the world by the power of Almighty God. You know, what a time to live and what a blessing to know the truth. What is this city again? Now, now God interpreted it for you in the last verse of chapter 17. I don't want you to ever forget it. Well, wh what is the city? Confusion. Lies. Smoke blowing out by false teaching. Whether it be, and, and you know, I left off, didn't I, the fourth dynasty a while ago. I was on a roll, and then I forgot the fourth. Maybe God wanted it that way, because you know what the fourth is? <clears throat> the fourth is religion. Satan loves to talk from pulpits. <clears throat> Excuse me, of people leading their people in a flyaway doctrine. It's not biblical. It was dreamed up by a poor little ill girl in 1832. And she had this dream of any moment doctrine. And two preachers were standing by and hot ziggity boy, they took it and brought up the rapture doctrine. And it has grown like wildfire since 1832. Little security blanket of any moment. You don't have to worry. And you know what they'll tell you? The religious uh, dynasty, you don't have to understand God's word. You do not have to understand the book of Revelation. You're going to be gone. Anybody that would let a man tell them they didn't have to understand God's word, if you would listen to them, your elevator's not topping out because you're putting man before God. Especially your preacher should have told you that the word revelation means to reveal or to make known. God wouldn't name a book to make known if he didn't want you to know it in completeness because it is the countdown and the chronological order of events that trans that um, bring to, to end the consummation of this age. Very important knowledge. But Satan loves to teach from pulpits. That's why God says judgment will begin at the pulpits. And boy, have they got it coming. Big time. Now, you know, don't shake their boat because they think they're doing what's right. I mean, from the hierarchy from downtown sends them little quarterlies, and it tells them what they should teach and what they shouldn't teach. Never, never, they'll sometimes, the seminaries will tell them, never go above a fourth grade education, teach on that level, and never, ever, ever speak on something controversial, or you'll hurt people's feelings and drive some away. Hey, if they can't take the controversy between Satan and Almighty God, you want to drive them away. You want real people that can build a work, not a bunch of fluff balls. And, and I'm not judging anyone. I'm just saying truth. Uh, the truth today is just fine. You teach it because you know as well as I do that is truth. That Fourth dynasty is probably the top of all of them. That hour of judgment is coming. And I want to see you reign supreme at that moment. I want to see you have letters by your name in the book of life that bring you a crown and an eternal life. That's the way you gain it, is by not being confused. Let's go with the next verse, please. Verse 11. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her. For no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. Now, after the seventh trump, and we're all changed into spiritual bodies, we're even in a different dimension than their merchandise is. Okay. So naturally, we wouldn't have it if they gave it to you. 
probably an oversimplification for some, but be that as it may. 12, it gets it said, the merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple, that's royalty, and silk, ooh, smooth, and scarlet, and all the fine wood, that's so sweet, ooh, and all manner of vessels of ivory, and all manner of vessels of most precious wood, and of brass, and iron, and marble. You know why? None of it will have any value. Different dimension. All in spiritual bodies have no need for that sort of thing, for we have the Father and his kingdom. Verse 13, and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense, wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beasts, that's to say cattle and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and souls of men. Satan wants all of it, okay? And they weep for it. Like to put people in slavery. 14, and the fruits that thy soul lusteth after are departed from thee, and all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. So you see, what, again, different dimension. The seventh trump sounds, and it all changes. And, and you, you had a glimpse of that in Matthew chapter 11 on the Mount of Transfiguration. They were awed when they saw Moses and Elijah and the Lord Jesus Christ so bright that it lit up the night sky. You don't need these earthly things. For you're heaven bound. The only thing that you can take, you can't take any one of those items with you. But do you remember chapter 14, verse 13? What did it say you could take with you? Let me give you a little pop test here. Do you remember? Only one thing you can take with you at your works because you're judged by it. And, oh, dear brother, now you, you've done it now. My preacher tells me you're judged by faith. No, the Bible says works, okay? It's what it is. Because, you see, you let me see your works, and I'll see your faith. You'll never see a man that has a lot of righteous works that he hadn't got the faith. Oh, 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 plenty. <clears throat> Don't let people deceive you. Works is what, righteous acts is what weaves the fine linen you wear in heaven. <clears throat> I guess it need not be said what you wear if you don't have any linen to make a robe. You don't wear anything. Fifteen. The merchants of these things, which were made rich by her, shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, of course, the merchants are the Kenites, little city merchants. Love it, love it, love it. Nothing to sell, nothing to buy. It's all gone bye-bye in a different dimension. Why? Because they believe in the Lord God Almighty. When many of the merchants and others tried to drive God out of our vocabulary. Verse 16, and saying, alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. 17, for in one hour, the hour of temptation, so great riches has come to naught. And every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors, as many as trade by sea, stood afar off. That's all the commerce is done. You know, this is why that Satan's little name came from, uh, was called Tyrus, even in the, from the first earth age. <clears throat> because his little friends on the island of Tyre, the Tyre means rock in the Hebrew tongue. He's not our rock, got it? They set up their little kingdom of commerce on this little rock. Why? Because it was a little island. 
it was, it, nobody could take it. It was so well protected. And this is where they kept their little valued, valuables. And, and the great ships of Tarshish would sail in there to do commerce like all over the world. Make, and as time would go on, Tyrus, Tyre fell. It's still there even to this day. And um, Nebuchadnezzar never took it. But here you have those merchants. You have their way. Nobody will buy their wares. Why? You don't need them. They're gone forever. A different dimension. Replaced by real valuable things. God's kingdom. Well, what is God's kingdom? Well, he's the king. And this earth and all the universe is his dominion. Next verse, please. 18. And cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, what city is like unto this great city? They worship the very confusion that rides upon the people, the four hidden dynasties that enslave them, that keep them captive, that outsmart them, use them. Many will say, well, I, one thing, I've never been a slave. Oh, well, let's see. Let me see. Now, you, you purchased a home. You, you, um, you, you signed a 30-year mortgage. And it's really tough making payments. Okay. But the house really only cost maybe five, ten thousand dollars $10,000, and you paid $120,000 for it. All that is profit and interest. And by the time you get through paying your percentage of interest on, on that $120,000, you'll pay $350,000. And work yourself to death 30 years, all your life, for who? Usury. Now, uh, you know, nothing wrong with buying a house on time. But don't ever think. And, and there, there's ways to beat that that is rigged, okay? Such as doubling up on payments and, or, or making payments to yourself and then paying cash. Uh, there are many ways to get around the four hidden dynasties if you have wisdom. Always use it. Verse 19 to continue. And verse 19 reads, And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, wherein were, made, wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. For in one hour is she made desolate. It all went up in smoke. You know, when confusion drops and people see what's happened to them, and the games stop being played. And reality becomes reality. And Christian, Christianity is no longer considered a religion, which we don't today. It's a reality. It's the real thing. Then they wake up and realize the love of our Father and how he leads us and directs us if you'll only listen to him. That's what becomes very important. Verse 20, rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles. You should rejoice. And prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. That day is coming. They may rough you up a little bit now, but don't worry. God says, vengeance belongeth to me. And boy, does he know how to bring it to pass. 21, and a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus, with violence, shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. All that confusion that rides upon the people on the Lord's day, when they see the true Father and, and the the fate goes into the abyss. And as it's written in Isaiah chapter 14, the world looks on him and says, is this the man that deceived the whole world? The false Christ, this is him. And they realize how 
shamefully deceived they were by not being familiar with God's word on how to overcome the beast system. What a shame. But come out of confusion. Come out of Babylon. Don't stay there. Well, how do I do it? Word of God. Verse 22. And the voice of harpers and musicians and of pipers and trumpeters uh, shall be heard no more at all in thee. And no craftsman of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. Once, it's all going to change. Different dimension, different time. Their old tricks won't work. They're failures. 23, and the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee, total darkness, and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee, for thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by the, thy sorcerers were all nations deceived. Sorcerers is pharmaceutica. In other words, people using drugs or getting drugged up and and fancy themselves this great dream and that great dream, and down they go. 24, to finish the chapter, and in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. In that great city of confusion, do you see why you need to come out of her? Do you remember I took you back to Matthew 23 where where Jesus told you the scribes and Pharisees sit in the seat of Moses. That means the lawgiver. And when they're nothing but the offspring of serpents, the serpent, Satan, who killed Cain in the beginning, murdered him. That identifies them as Kenites. Down to poor old Zacharias between the porch and the altar. And you've got to know who they are. And you've got to come out of that confusion and know that God loves you. There will be no more destroying of prophets when our Father returns. For His Word is the law, and it does not change. Not one jot, not one tittle. Our Father will fulfill it in the Son, and on that great Lord's Day, just as we're going to find out in the next chapter, he comes as King of kings and Lord of lords. Don't miss it. All right, bless your heart. You listen a moment, won't you please? Ezra and Nehemiah. These two books are necessary to understand the returning to the Father in that sense of the example set forth in the end times of the rebuilding of God's most favorite place on earth. Also, within these two books, you find the hidden secret, hidden from most people's eyes, that the study in the Hebrew and the Chaldee that is given in these particular books will teach you how that the priesthood itself became polluted during this period of time. This is to say about 400 years before Christ walked the earth to the time that he did walk instructing you very wisely, setting the example of how it is that we gather back to Christ himself. Ezra and Nehemiah, fantastic. You'll enjoy them. And there we are. Back again. Let's have the 800 number, please. 1-800-643-4645. That number is good from Puerto Rico, throughout the U.S., Alaska, Hawaii, all over Canada. If the spirit moves, you got a question, share it. Just... Please never ask a question about a particular reverend or denomination or organization. We don't judge people. You don't have to judge people. Father judges. He is the judge. But you should discern who it is you should listen to, who you should study, and naturally I hope you decide it's God's Word, chapter by chapter and verse by verse, to learn for yourself the truth that your father laid out, whereby you know exactly 
how it's going down. Don't ever miss that. Those of you that listen by short wave around the world, it's always a pleasure hearing from you and your announcer. At the end of the hour, we'll give you our mailing address. Now, you got a prayer request. You don't need the number or an address. Why? God knows what you're thinking. You, you don't even have to say it out loud. He's got time for you because you're his child. He created no one else like you. Your DNA is different. Your fingerprints are different. You're unique. But he does want you to love him. He loves you, doesn't love what you're doing necessarily, but he sure loves you. He created you for his pleasure. Just a little hint, if you ever want to be blessed, you better give him some pleasure by telling him you love him. That is what he wants from you. Father, around the globe we come, we ask that you lead, guide, direct, Father, touch in Yeshua's precious name. Thank you, Father. Amen. Okay, and question time. We're going to go with uh, Mary from Mississippi. I have a question concerning a child born out of wedlock. Um, a men's are. Please explain again their place in life. I, I want you to know there's a great difference in an illegitimate child. There, the, nothing falls on the illegitimate child. It is the manzar which um, uh, puts it as a hybrid, not a hybrid necessarily, but this, this, it is the child that suffers for that. Look up the word in, in the Hebrew from Deuteronomy, the book of Deuteronomy, and the whole thing is explained very clear. It is just a thing of common sense. But many people try to think that that Mamzar fits every illegitimate child. That's wrong. That is not true. You need to know what you're talking about, and you can only find out by going to the Hebrew. Take your Strong's Concordance and check out the word Mamzar, which is bastard in Deuteronomy. Nancy from Iowa, I, f I have heard you speak often about the fact that drug users, dealers will not be in heaven. If someone who uses mar is someone who uses marijuana included in this group, I have a friend that has used marijuana for several years, and I am worried about his future. Can you help me with this as also let me know where to look in the Bible for uh, documentation? Well, the word sorcerers. Check it out in the Greek tongue. Pharmaceutica, okay, where our word pharmacist comes. There's not going to be any in heaven. But now, what you have to realize is what, is, what did a sorcerer do besides drugs? They used drugs to produce a, a uh, high instead of counting on God himself to raise them to a higher level of thinking. And this is what will put you in hell. Now, uh, you have to be very careful in teaching this because many people are on prescriptions for high blood pressure or many other things, for back injuries or something else. There's nothing wrong with that. And besides, I'm not the judge God is the judge as far as an occasional user or something, but um, <clears throat> one thing that a person wants to think about, drugs are addicting. And when you're addicted to something, when, when you have to do without it, do you think Satan's not going to know that? And he's going to offer you a fix after a fix after a fix to help your little nerves. Because he's a good, I mean, good old buddy. Anything goes. And he will tempt you if you'll just worship him. He'll give you a fix. So you see, it puts you in a very weak state. And there's many things connected with that. Again, I'm not a judge. But people simply know what's right and what's wrong. Margaret from South Carolina my name is Margaret. I'm 65 years old, and my husband is 55. I don't know what to do about him. I get $790 a month, and it takes it all for bills, and I have to pay his bills, too. Uh, he won't get a job. He said he's too old to work, and I told him he can do something. He got good help till my pastor, what I... What, my pastor, what can I do because I love him? Well, I, th I think you ought to read 
2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10. I think you might ought to read it to him. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10. It goes something like this. If a man won't work, don't feed him. Okay. That has the greatest... Do, er, uh, this is a, a healthy man now, not, not a handicapped person. Uh, but if he's a handicapped person, he'd probably be on some kind of aid anyway. But if he's a healthy person, don't feed him. And he'll go to work. That's God's way. Question, Pastor Murray. Michael from Iowa. How are we going to be delivered up before the Antichrist? Mark 13, you're just going to be delivered up because you refuse to worship him. He doesn't deliver you up to beat you or anything else. He wants to love you. He wants to convert you. He wants you to be happy with him not the Lord Jesus Christ. So he will send for you in the great revival tent of life and try to convert you. But what comes out of your mouth at that time, you're not to premeditate. God will speak through you. Are God's elect judged right after they die, or do they have to wait for a thousand years for judgment? The great black throne judgment happens at the end of the thousand years. But God's elect and those that love the Lord Jesus Christ take part in the first resurrection which is on the first day, uh, wh which is whenever they die, or the first day of the um, Lord's day. Zachar uh, the Pastor Murray, please tell me where in the book the four hidden dynasties are mentioned in the Bible. Sure looks like my, like they are upon us. Well, they sure are. And it's strange we talked about these in today's lecture. The four hidden dynasties are spoken of in Zechariah chapter 1, verse 19. You want to get acquainted with them because what follows them is four carpenters. That's meaning God's work that has that stone with seven eyes, which is God's 7,000 elect, that God, through the Holy Spirit, will bring as they are delivered up before the false messiah. And God will change the world. But those four things are used against us. They would be, of course, as I earlier stated, political, financial, uh, educational, and religion. All four things are used against us. You want to be real careful. Get the real thing. Uh, this would be Agnes from Ohio. Pastor, I am in my fifth month or more in listening to your teaching in the mornings, and I am delighted to tell you I have learned so much. I am, however, of, and I'm sorry, I never mentioned another religion, so I'm just going to say blank, you're a, a member of another group. Would this make any difference in my learning the Word of God's teaching? Absolutely not. God's Word is for everybody, and, um, and if you if you um, if we've assisted you we thank god for it but there's never a sin or anything wrong in studying god's word chapter by chapter and verse by verse I, I would never let anyone tell me it was a sin to study the word of god that would that would really be something wouldn't it uh, but there are people that would try but you should know in your own heart never never a sin to study god's word Karen from Louisiana, my question is this. You have said that we get, the, we get the life that we deserve because of our defections, our actions, rather, in the first earth age. Does this mean that I deserve being molested as a child? I think that I know the answer, but some of my, your viewers may not. Well, you can't, um, that has nothing to do Having been molested is man's fault that molesters are not punished as God tells us to. When we don't punish them as God tells us to, they got free reign. And, and that, is, that is the fault of the people, not God. Because God told us what to do with them. And um, just the same as he told us what to do with a murderer. But we don't do that either. He said, send them to me. That is to say, one that is evil and lies in wait and, and takes uh, an innocent life, okay? But it is, it is the fact of our laws shifting from God's law, 
which is natural law, to the law of precedent. The law of precedent is what this man might think and what that man might think, and men usually are always wrong. Uh, Martin from, Oklahoma, from Oregon. My family has recently lost a beloved pet. My friend, many friends have likewise suffered such a loss. I would appreciate receiving your assistance from the word. Well, Leviticus chapter, Leviticus, uh, I'm sorry, Isaiah chapter 11. I'll say it again. Isaiah chapter 11, you find that in heaven we have the same animals there that we have today. And, and there are no carnivores. They have been changed also. Everybody gets along just fine. Read it. Isaiah 11. Okay, this would be Carrie from Colorado. Um, thank you for listening and enjoying the word. Is to, is, uh, in such an understanding manner, or in our teaching in such an understanding manner, you're welcome. My question is whether um, unpasteurized honey is a clean food. After having cancer, I try to use it instead of refined sugar. It is a wonderful food. It is natural. It even, if it is a local honey that is, uh, that the bees have uh, put together in, from the flowers and the, of your community, it also helps your immune system, your allergies. The very honey itself made from those uh, wildflowers helps with you build an immunity uh, to, um, to reaction from, um, from allergies. Roger from North Carolina, good food, good food. I have a question that has been on my mind for a long time. It is very plain in God's word from even the King James. God stated, Jacob I love and Esau I hated. Why do most all preachers paint Jacob as the bad guy and Esau the good one? You teach it just like the scriptures teach it. All the others like to teach their opinion and ignore what God said. Is there a rhyme or reason why they teach their opinion, or is it that they are a whole lot sottish? Good word translated back to the Hebrew. Um, mainly because they're against covert action. And it is God himself that arranged the covert action. They cannot see that. The fact that, that uh, Esau hated his heritage. He hated the father. Father doesn't hate somebody for no reason at all. He hated him because he didn't care anything about God or anything that God might want. And that's what he was in the first earth age. That's what he was in, in this particular earth age. And unfortunately, you get some lefties in the pulpits and anything that would, um, would come up even resem resembling covert action against the enemy. They, they shirk from it. And uh, there, there are reasons that covert action need be taken. Our military does it all the time, praise God. We have, we have three, uh, three um, um, SEALs, Navy SEALs at this time that are having a terrible trial. And somebody could, if they were really a real leader, could put a stop to this. Because what it does, it strengthens the enemy. That the man they captured is the one that burned four American contractors and hung them from a bridge. And he's saying that one of these seals, when they went, by, went behind using covert, covert action and grabbed him out and brought him out, punched him in the tummy. He got a tummy ache. And there, but you know what? Our government is putting the SEALs in a military triune court and they take the terrorists and bring them into the legal system of little slick lawyers that can represent them, you know. What? We've turned everything upside down. I mean, they, they need to be released and given medals. Because this is going to make certain people, even in high places, turn against our nation for stupidity. 
it's, it is a sin. I, I kind of got unloaded on that, but being an old military person, an old combat Marine, that's what I feel about it. And somebody needs to take action and be a leader. Okay, D.D. from Illinois. Why, if the tribulation is five months, does John mention times, times, and, and a half time, three and a half years? Well, because it was shortened. Have you never read the 13th chapter of Mark? Jesus, for the elect's sake, shortened the time, or there would be no, no time, no flesh saved. And Revelation chapter 9, which we just covered, tells you how it was shortened to five months. You can, you can go back in history a little further than that. Get the whole seven-year period seven times. And you'll read that in Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. Joan from Arkansas, should I plant a garden this year? Absolutely. Do you know who God blesses most of all? Those he still finds working out in the field when he returns. Okay. Not, not somebody that's already worshiping Satan and ready to fly away. So you plant that garden and it's just about time to get her turned, okay? Get her ready. Marilyn from Illinois, can the people who are in heaven pray for their loved ones who are here on earth? Of course they can. They're alert, they're alive, and they're well. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. And if they so choose, they could sure do it. Um, there are some people, I don't know if it'd do any good or not, but they can try, okay? D from Michigan, why are there so many different religions? Because you have so many people that look up, they, they dream and they look up in the sky and they see a huge GP. And they think it means go preach, but really what it means is go plow. Okay. So what you get, you get a lot of people in life that are misled, misguided, and then they will decide to go to a seminary. And it's like little 90-day wonders we had in World War II, you know. They, you give them 90 days training and, and give them a shave tail and turn them loose, you know. And some of them made it pretty good old boys before it was over with, a little experience. But studying God's Word is a lifetime occupation. And sometimes, unfortunately, organized religion they don't want anyone to rock the boat. And they will make light of somebody that does rock boats. But let me tell you something. As a Christian, as long as you've got Christ in your boat, let her shake, let her rock, let her roll. You're just going to make it through every time, just like it should, right on schedule. But that's why we have so many different religions. Maddie from Mississippi, where do we find the health laws? Leviticus chapter 11 is one of the best places. I can make it real easy for you. The general rule of the thumb is don't eat scavengers. Don't eat anything that is a scavenger and you'll do pretty good. Joe from Iowa, would you please explain the first earth age and the fallen angels and who we are and who we were and who we are? and who we are today? Uh, that's quite a question. The first earth age was an age before this one when Satan fell and God ended that first earth age and brought this age into being. Uh, I, I make it about 14,000 years ago. And um, when he brought this being, he began a day with the Lord is a thousand years, okay? And he brought it into being and those that were really serving God and went against Satan in the first earth age are God's elect. He knows, as it is written in Romans chapter 8, beginning with verse 26, I foreknew you, I foreordained you, I, I, and judged you. He justified you, which means I judged you in the first earth age. Now, you'll still mess up and he will still correct you today but he can interfere with your life because you already are justified and you can't bring it up on judgment day to him which if, for interfering in your life as some excuse, okay? Because you're one of his elect. Now, 
someone that didn't make it in the first earth age, if God were to intercede in their life and force them to do a certain thing that scriptures could come to pass as they are written, then they would have a legitimate, they would think, excuse to complain on judgment day saying, if you had made me, he won't make anybody with free will, God will not make them do anything. Okay, They're on their own. But unless they ask for his help, if they do, hey, he's there. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. That's who we are today is the, the time of salvation. Marion from Washington. I live in subsidized housing for seniors because I can't afford to live anywhere else. Am I still going to be able to live here when Satan comes back? And can I keep my food stamps? I'm 79 years old. You hang on to them, you keep them. Satan's coming with plenty of everything. That's why he's going to deceive a lot of people. He's going to pay off everybody's mortgage. He's going to give a chicken in every pot. And people are going to think it's heaven on earth, but it's pure hell. And that's how he deceives people. People think in the end times they look like war, war, war. No war, just the opposite. It's peace. Only it's a piece that'll put you right in hell. I'm out of time. You, you, you be happy, um, Miriam. You just in, you're in good shape. I love you all because you enjoy studying our Father's Word, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. Most of all, God loves you for it. Hey, you know what? It makes His day when you read His letter, and when you make His day, boy, is He going to make yours? It makes Him happy. We're brought to you by your tithes and offerings. If, you, if we've helped you, you help us keep coming to you. Won't you do that? But, and uh, bless God, he will again, he'll always bless you. But most important, though, you know what? What I want you to do, I want you to stay in his word every day. In his word is a good day, even with trouble. Do you know why? Because Jesus Yeshua is the living word. Hearing God's Word with understanding will change your life. We hope you have enjoyed studying God's Word here on the Shepherd's Chapel Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. If you would like to receive more information concerning Shepherd's Chapel, you may request our free introductory offer. Our introductory offer contains the Mark of the Beast audio tape, our monthly newsletter with a written Bible study, a tape catalog, and a list of written reference works available through Shepherd's Chapel. To request our free introductory offer by telephone, call 800-643-4645, 24 hours a day. You may also request our introductory offer by writing to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Once again, that's Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. We invite you to join us for the next in-depth Bible study each weekday at this same time. Thank you for watching today's program, and God bless you. book of Peter. Here we have two books, First and Second Peter, that, that are absolutely fascinating. That great old fisherman telling us, leading us, directing us, guiding us, going into the depth, if you would, in that second book, into the three earth ages, giving the most accurate recorded account of the events that transpire and document that there are three earth ages, that there was one before this one, this one, and one to come. Peter, the great fisherman, which in his gentleness and his kindness brings us uh, two books, the books of Peter, that lead, guide, direct, even in your daily life, that teach and show you how to be happy, how to find that peace of mind, and to know yourself. The books of Peter, I know you're going to enjoy them.
Welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel Network Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. Wisdom is understanding God's Word. Pastor Murray's unique teaching approach brings God's Word alive with meaning as he takes you on a chapter-by-chapter, verse-by-verse study of God's letter to you, the Bible. And now here is Pastor Arnold Murray. Good day to you. God bless you. Say welcome to the Shepherd's Chapel. Welcome to this family Bible study hour. We're ready to get back into our Father's Word, broken vessels. Our Father is the potter, and as long as you're loving Him and following Him, you are a lump of clay that is always pliable, can be molded, can be reshaped, because we all need it occasionally. And that's why we've titled this lecture, Broken Vessels. Um, in the last lecture,